Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Real Estate Realities with the Rebel Broker. My name is Robert Whitelaw, and I am the Rebel Broker, licensed real estate broker in the state of California, member of the National Association of Real Tours. But please don't hold that against me. Welcome to another show, folks. As I mentioned, my name is Robert Whitelaw. I am a licensed real estate broker in Southern Silicon Valley. If you'd like to reach out to me, feel free to do that at soldbyrobert.com. There you're going to find a lot of very cool tools. And I've actually just started a new set of tools that I think are interesting where you can subscribe to a list that gives you all the latest listings and changes in prices and all that sort of things in whatever areas we define. I've got some set up, but if you've got an area you're specifically interested in, even right down to certain neighborhoods, we can set that up for you. Uh, and it's a great way for you to keep track of what's going on in your local market. And, and I think it's a great tool for folks who just want to keep their fingers on the pulse of their local markets. So feel free to reach out to me directly again at soldbyrobert.com if you'd like to take advantage of any of those tools. And of course, you can also start your home search there if that's what you want to do. But today, we are going to try to convey some information that I think is super important right now. And that is mostly directed at my sellers. Um, we're in a pivoting market. Inventory is way up. I just ran the numbers for January. And as we've seen in the last few years, January has seen a huge increase in inventory. We are not selling anywhere near the number of homes that are getting listed. So we're just adding more and more homes to that inventory number. It's going to be super interesting to see what happens in February. But given that as the current reality, there are some things that we need to internalize that are completely different from how the market used to be. One of those things is your listing agent now can have a huge influence on how much money you make when you sell your home or how much money you lose when you sell your home. And we're going to cover some points here. We're going to cover some things. And I don't want to just make this, you know, I did a search. <laughs> I do this frequently before a show. If I'm hitting a topic and if, if, if I've sort of sussed out what I think my main points are, well, what do the other smart people think, right? And where do you go for smart people? Google, right? That's where all the smart people are. I went ahead and Googled things to, to worry about at your agent, bad things your agent might do, et cetera, et cetera. What a collection of useless information. Uh, by and large, 95% of what's out there is absolutely stupid and doesn't give you anything to actually use right now, today, to help you make your situation better. Uh, it's a lot of platitudes and general crapola that I don't think helps anybody. So let's fix that. We're going to fix that today, right now, in today's show. So you are someone who wants to sell your home. Let's go ahead and figure out how you can best do that. Now, you're going to interview some agents. For those of you who have visited my website, you know that I offer a, you know, 12 questions you should ask your real estate agent as a download. Um, you know, I'm not sure where that is exactly at, this, at, at today's moment. But if you'd like to get it, go ahead and again, contact me through soldbyrobert.com. I'd be happy to share it with you. But there are some things that you're going to need to, to follow up on. And what I like about what I'm about to tell you is it's absolutely 100% something you can pin down. Right. When you are interviewing agents, you're frequently relying on the data they're presenting to you or the answers they're giving you, whether they're true or not. And in some cases, the, the, the answers really are tough to verify one way or the other. So it's it's in a lot of ways out of your hands to determine just factually whether or not you're being told the truth in that whole listing agreement period or, or the, when you're interviewing agents. So these are all things that are absolutely pinned down, you can figure it out, they can't sneak it by you if you're paying attention. But that's the key. If you're a seller, you need to be paying attention because it's never been more crucial for you to have a good selling agent. And we have been in a market where for almost a decade, listing agents could just count on the momentum of the market to get the home sold. Now, still a very talented agent would get it sold better than other agents. They'd get you more in less time, frequently with better terms, but, it was a downhill move, right? The car, the car was going to roll down the hill no matter who was at the wheel, right? Who's steering and, and, and whatnot is going to help determine how well you end up at the bottom of that hill. But now we're at the, the bottom of the hill and I'm trying to get up it and trying to get over it so that you get sold. So a whole bunch of it depends on how well that driver puts their foot down on the gas, manages that brake and steers correctly, right? So let's go ahead and hit some things that I want you to have in the forefront of your mind 
as you're going through the process. Now, this kind of assumes you've already, well, it, it very much assumes you've already picked your agent. You're already in it. You're already doing it. But I think by focusing on these things, you're at least now in that stage of the relationship where you can make them prove the faith that you've put in them by working with them at all. Right. And some of these will also help inform questions that you might want to ask before you even let them list your home. So things you want to pay attention to. Number one, and these aren't in any particular order, maybe just in the order that you, you would likely do them. Number one, make sure they prove the price they say your home will sell for. And that sounds like a strange one. You're going to get people coming in telling you, according to my market experience and what I believe and what the comparables show, this is what your home should be marketed for in today's market. It, right now, there are a select group of agents who will tell you the highest number possible because they want to get the listing. Even if they know it won't sell or, or they're just too dumb to realize it won't sell at that price. So make them prove it with data and make sure the data they're showing you actually is comparable. If you're trying to sell a three bedroom, two bath home and they're comparing it to a five bedroom, four bath home. Why are they doing that? That home's likely going to be a lot more square footage than yours. Make sure the comparables they're picking are actually comparables. Second, how close are they to your house? Are, they, are the houses that they're pointing to in a completely different neighborhood from yours? And do you know enough about your local community to realize that that's the high-end community compared to where your home might be located? Keep these things in mind as they're trying to sell you on what your price is. Because as I've mentioned in my market analysis in the last coffee and real estate and in the last podcast, it is critically important for you to price your home right, right out of the gate because the odds are prices are going to continue to drop and then that would leave you chasing a declining market and you don't want to do that because you'll make more money today than you would in a month when we're talking about a declining market. So that whole axiom of you can always reduce the price. Well, sure, you can always reduce the price, but you'll be doing that forever if you're chasing the market. Okay, next, how are they marketing your home outside of the multiple listing service? And I think this one is critically important. And I've always put a lot of emphasis on my out of MLS marketing. Prior to the current market, over the last 10 years, as things were going crazy, realtors could get away with just putting it on the MLS. And that was it. They put a sign in the yard, they put it on the MLS, and that would be it. Those days are fading. And if not completely faded and gone, at least still far enough behind us that we need to focus on other ways that your real estate agent is marketing your property. Ask them what they're doing. How, what, what kinds of things are they doing? Are they sending out mailers, like actual in the mail mailers? Are they sending to, to lists of people that they have uh, of email lists? And if so, why do they believe those people would be interested in buying their home? Make sure you're understanding not only what they're doing, but the why behind it. You might be shocked to discover that a lot of agents are going to tell you they're not doing anything or, or they'll try to make something up on the spot because a vast majority of them simply do nothing outside of the multiple living ser service. They list it. They figure that's great. It's going to get it's going to get syndicated to all those other sites like Zillow and and Realtor.com and Trulia and Redfin and all those. But that all happens automatically, assuming that they've set up their MLS account to allow that to happen, which isn't always guaranteed. So, yes. You could actually have a real estate agent working for you who whose listing that they're going to enter into the MLS will only end up showing up in the MLS for other agents that do searches in the MLS or maybe only show up there and at realtor.com. So be aware of that. And, and as a suggestion, make sure that when they tell you that it's going to go live on a certain date, you go and look at your listing. Look at it in Zillow. Look at it in Trulia. Look at it on realtor.com. Make sure everything looks right to you and looks good to you because remember, that is the first hurdle you need to get over for your home to get sold. If your presentation online does not look good, you are not going to get people driving by your home or asking to see it. They're going to go by, they're going to shrug it off and go to the next house that looks good, that's maybe priced a little bit better. As part of that, next point, number three, high quality photos for your listing. If your real estate agent shows up at your house with their phone to take the photographs, be concerned. Today, photographs need to look top notch. Now, are there some cell phones out there that have amazing cameras that would beat out some of the most expensive cameras from 10 years ago? Yes, absolutely. However, a handheld cell phone is not going to be able to take high quality HDR photos. And that's what you should be taking if you're an agent. If you're not taking high dynamic range photos of your listings, you're not doing your job right. 
And if you're going to do HDR photos, you need to be stabilized. You can't use them with your hands. You need to have it on a tripod to take HDR photos. So just keep all of these things in mind. If, if they come to do the photos of your house, that's literally them walking around with a cell phone, you need to be worried. Second, do not allow them to take any portrait mode photos. You know how that is. You know how everything is rotated so that the, the, the landscape is on its side, like most things on Instagram or TikTok, those types of places. Do not allow that to happen. And if it does, tell the agent they need to retake those photos in landscape mode because all the MLSs out there are set up for landscape mode. None of them are set up for portrait mode. Those photos will still show up usually correct on some MLSs, but I find that they end up being stretched and distorted if those photos are also used as the front photo of your property. And let's go ahead and take a look at an example of that. Now, I'm not gonna give you the address. I don't, I'm not here to shame agents. I'm here to point out ways that you can identify agents that aren't doing the job you need. Now, if you look at the, this is the, this is the lead photo for this property. This is the photo that someone picked thinking someone will want to click on this to look at more about this house. Look at this and tell me if that's what you think that does. The resolution is horrible and it is not even a fully framed photo. It has half of the front door in it and the porch lights. But this is the lead-in photo. As someone is now scrolling through hundreds of listings because the inventory is so huge, does this photo jump out as you, at you as the one you should click? Probably not, right? So let's see why this is such a problem. It was taken in uh, portrait mode and it was stretched and distorted. See, it actually does take a photo of the area you'd want to see, but because of the way lead photos are handled, it simply got stretched and it defaulted to taking a chunk out of the center of that photo. This is clearly taken by someone who is clueless about how photos get handled by all the various ser services. And it's a universal thing. It's not like, oh, well, Realtor just does weird stuff. Nope, nope. MLSs do it. Realtor does it. Most others do it. It's, it's not something that is a, a correct way to handle photos. So number one, no portrait, all landscape. Next. Resolution. Notice the resolution on these. These are clearly a phone camera and an old phone camera. And we can see a lot of outdoor photos. Again, another portrait photo. Um, again, an outside photo. Another outside photo. Another outside photo. Another outside photo. Another outside photo. Finally, we get an inside photo. Very low resolution. But take a look at how crappy that resolution is. And it's not giving you really any idea of the home. They're not put in any kind of an order that that gives you any indication of where each one of these photos relates to the last one. Uh, I know that's kind of a nitpicky thing. It's something that annoys the heck out of me, but I like to do that where you can kind of, in a photo, at least get some clues as to where this photo exists in relation to the one before it and after it, usually by making sure something is in the frame. So it's a way to kind of do a virtual tour without doing the virtual tour. And another thing about this property, there is no virtual tour, not even the laziest virtual tours. Because even today, you can do 3D virtual tours using your iPhone if you want. And, and that's not even getting done in most of these cases. So high resolution photos are mandatory. You have got to do it. Now, here's another example. These are all, and by the way, these are not ones I've stored for weeks or it took me months to find. I literally took five minutes before I started this podcast and simply looked through listings in my local area. That's it. So here's another one. Now, is this the photo that's going to make you want to look more at this property? It is a horrible low resolution photo, and it is the kitchen counter with dirty dishes on it and some sort of food in Tupperware right next to the sink. So no effort was made to stage this photo at all. Even in the worst situations, realtors should be willing to do some level of staging and staging could equal I am moving things off the counter that I will move back to the counter when I have taken the photos in that area to lowering the toilet seat. Just some of the basics, right? These are things that, that should fundamentally be obvious that often are not. And I realize for my podcast listeners, I apologize that you are unable to see these photos, but I'm trying to describe what I'm seeing here. So again, if we look at these photos in more detail, we can see the problem here is this is a portrait photo being used as the this is why you should click on this listing photo, the number one photo, and it shouldn't be the number one photo. And it sh there, there should be no portrait photos in here at all. Uh, and all of these photos, or most of them are portrait photos. Here's a close up of that uh, weird bowl again uh, in the kitchen. Um, and here, here's another perfect example. Same 
photo from the front that is shot in portrait that was screwed up in the front and now in the ask a question about this property, it is completely distorted because again, it was shot in portrait mode. And finally, I've got one more. And again, these are all ones I just found. No effort at all. Took me five minutes. There are plenty of others, I'm sure. I only looked, I, I waited until I had three examples that I could share with you. And this one, again, r horrible resolution. And this one, I think, is simply the camera. Uh, so they're either using a camera from the 90s, a digital camera from the 90s, or a really old cell phone. Uh, but we can see here, and we and what's really weird is it's got all this bridge MLS stuff on it. Not really sure why that's there. Uh, maybe that's something with someone else's MLS. But all of these are low-res photos. These are terrible. Um, and again, if you're trying to sell a property, this is not the way that you make it happen. Okay. Um, and again, if, if they do have a brand new cell phone that can do amazing photos, that's fine. If the, if the camera can do, if the, the phone can do HDR photos, that's great. And I know my iPhone can, I do not use my iPhone for that, but it can do HDR photos. They would still need to have it on a tripod of some kind or something to stabilize it so that it does that. Because what HDR is, it's several photos taken at different exposures so if it's moving or not stable, those photos aren't going to line up in post when you blend them together so that you get that high dynamic range. All right. Anyway, next, use every available bit of space provided in their MLS for the property description. It is amazing how many listings I find out there that have no description at all or something very short like don't miss this one, right? That That is not enough. You need to provide information that's going to... Answer potential questions that a buyer might have, but also give a buyer in, encouraging reasons to come and look at this property. So they should be using every bit of space that is allowed to them to do these descriptions in the MLS. And some have character limits. I, I know mine does. I don't recall what the limit is. It's it's much less than I would like it to be. But I make sure to fill that up every single time, no matter how big or small the property is. But then also keep in mind that sites like Zillow and Trulia will allow realtors to write even longer property descriptions, and they should. Uh, Realtor.com, I don't believe does. It just takes exactly what it gets from the MLS affiliate and ports it right into Realtor.com. But I know that I've been able to go in and edit descriptions in Trulia and Zillow in the past to make it longer. And it's just a question of using what is given to you to the maximum, right? It's it's not just a question of throwing on the MLS and hoping for the best. It's about doing it on the MLS to 11 so that every element of what you're putting into this MLS listing is the best it could possibly be so that your client, you, the seller, has the highest probability of selling quickly for your price or more and with the best possible terms. All right, uh, is your home easy to show? This is a question that you need to ask yourself and your agent should be pushing for your home to be as easy to show as possible. Now, the easiest to show obviously would be a vacant home. If you're living in your home, you need to figure out a way to make it super easy for agents to show your property because the bottom line is a whole bunch of real estate agents out there that represent buyers have a lot of homes to choose from when it comes to showing properties to their buyers and they're going to pick the ones that are easiest to show first. I tend to show the easiest ones to show first simply because they're the easy ones to show. Uh, or I'll do the ones that aren't so easy first because I have to schedule a time. But if we're working at last minute or last minute plans change, you're always going to find those easy to show properties are the ones that are going to get shown. And that equals a couple of things. One, being as flexible as possible as how much notice you need before someone can come and look at your property. I would say that the the lowest bar for that is just call, just give 15 minutes notice, which is obviously very intrusive. But if you are able to live in a way where you don't need to do a quick cleanup before someone comes to look at the home, try to figure out a way to embrace that 15 minute notice standard. Otherwise, go for maybe an hour, uh, but try not to make it 24 hour notice. You, you will fall, get far fewer showings if you're requiring 24 hour notice on your property. Next, your property should have a lockbox on it. The realtor should be able to, who's gonna show the home, should be able to get the key without having to interact with you at all. And you should not be there when the home gets show, sold or gets shown. It just, it's just gonna be better for everybody involved. You won't get into any conversations with buyers where 
things might get said that are misunderstood. Let the contracts talk for you in that regard. Uh, that's always going to serve you better, but make it as easy as possible that property to get shown. Next, inf correct information entered on your listing. This one is really amazingly annoying to me, and I realize this is maybe a, a smaller segment of the folks who listen to my show, but if you are someone who owns a multifamily property and you have someone listing your property, you, please make sure they're entering the information relating to your property correctly. You would be amazed how many, and because I am constantly looking for, A, for myself, B, for clients who are buyers who I'm trying to help house hack by buying a duplex, triplex, quad, whatever. You would be amazed at how many agents apparently don't understand how to enter data for a multi-unit property where now normally in the MLS, there will be a section where you identify how many different units do you have, how big is each unit, and how much does each unit rent for. And, and I'll find agents simply don't enter anything in that area and leave all of that into the description. There's nothing more frustrating than that, particularly if you have folks who require certain numbers of bedrooms and baths in those rental units or whatever, for whatever reason. Um, they are hampering it and they're usually making it worse for you by not being accurate in what they're reporting. For you, for those of you who just have a single family residential home that you just want to get sold, make sure to look through all of that and make sure that it's correct. Make sure the square footage is correct. Make sure that it has the right number of bedrooms and bathrooms. If there are amenities in your home that are not noted anywhere in the listing, either in simply the, the forms part of it where it says pool, yes, no, or any of those kinds of things. If, if your home has a pool, but it's not your pool, it's a community pool, but your agent has entered no under pool, that is incorrect. You do have a pool. You are paying HOA dues to maintain that pool and it's accessible to you. So pool should say yes, not no. Uh, so just make sure, and it should also be mentioned in the de description of the property that there is a community pool or whatever other community amenities might be available. So you have to put on your buyer's hat and think, Am I seeing what I need to see as a buyer? Am I getting the information I need to have to make an informed decision on whether or not I want to take a look at this property? Next, all information, photos, tours, drone footage, whatever, needs to be live the minute that your home goes live on the MLS. And here's what I'm going to suggest you do. You don't necessarily even need to do this with your agent. You could do it uh, through realtor.com. You could do it through, you know, or you could just ask your realtor to set it up for you, which would probably be the best way to go because those are the folks who are in this bucket are the most active buyers. Because here's, here's the scenario that you want to avoid. Your home goes onto the MLS. So it gets included now in whatever outgoing emails go to all those buyers that have saved searches for properties. Yay, your home fits the search they're doing. Your home is a three-bedroom, two-bath home with at least 1,300 square feet in the west end of town. Outstanding. You're going to show up in their search. It lands in the inbox, the mail inbox for that buyer, along with all the other homes that have listed since the last time they got this email. And they may get this email daily or they may get it, get it the minute your home comes on the market. They may get it weekly. But odds are they're going to probably just get it once a day. That's the most typical subscription level that I see with my buyers. So you're going to be mixed in probably with other properties. If you don't have a photo, if you don't have an adequate description, you're going to get tossed to the side. They're not even going to look at you because there's simply too many other homes that do provide that information that make it easier for them to figure things out. Or maybe they'll have the best of intentions of returning to your listing when all that stuff is added. But do you know what the odds of them doing that are? Very, very low. And you never want to put a barrier between a buyer and information about the product they're interested in buying. So that's just plain bad planning. And all of that stuff needs to be available. Every single thing that might entice that buyer to look at your home needs to be available the second it is seen on the MLS. Now, that means when they, and this is not something that's difficult to do. A real estate agent can enter everything into the MLS weeks and weeks before it's going to go live on the MLS. So everything can be there super early. And then they simply need to go in, click a button, and everything that's already there is suddenly now made available to the search engines for the MLS system and for Realtor.com. And it'll all end up feeding out to the Redfins and Zillows and Trulias so that everybody can go out and check out your property. But if it doesn't have all of that updated information 
all the latest information on that first day, it's gonna be missing from all of those portals and you're gonna lose out on it. So just make sure that you follow up on this. You'd be amazed how many people do not follow up on what their agent is doing or checks that the listing that's been entered for their home is correct. Usually the only time they're ever exposed to it is when the agent sits down with them and may ask them questions that they're specifically asking to fill out the form or the fields for the MLS listing. I know I do that. In fact, I even I, I typically handle that with a virtual meeting where I'll have the screen up where I'm entering everything for them and we'll be making sure that we have all the best information for that. But that's really it. And I think that's a this is a payoff show. This is one where you're getting data that is going to either make you money or prevent you from losing a lot of money as you deal with the process of trying to get your home sold. And also, I want you as buyers to understand that these are things you should expect. If you're not seeing these things, I would suggest that buyers not discount a house where these things are missing. Think of this as an opportunity to potentially see a home that other buyers are going to overlook because the agent hasn't done their job well enough to really make sure all these tasks are completed to the best possible level. So you have choices as buyers, and I realize that you can move on to another property that's perhaps been put together better, but always realize that that one that all of your, remember you're competing with buyers, right? You, you, the buyers want houses too. So if you're able to find one that has some ambiguity because there's not enough information, and if you're the one, that one buyer who's willing to take that extra step to either call the listing agent or to do a drive-by, you may be pleasantly surprised to discover that you can financially benefit as a buyer because a seller's agent didn't do all the things I just said. And it will end up making you money and costing the seller money. All right? Okay, folks, as always, the goal is to leave more information on the table than we take up in your time. I absolutely hope we've accomplished that this time around. Thanks for listening, and I will talk to all of you next time.